This video will overview the procedure to check the voltage, load test, and charge a 12 volt car battery. Note, this procedure is identical for a lawn or garden tractor which also uses a 12 volt battery. There is a lot of confusion concerning batteries, how to test them, and how or why to charge them. I hope to clear up some of that confusion with this video. Note, it's important to wear personal protective equipment when performing any checks on a car or tractor battery, such as wearing gloves and full eye protection. Lead acid batteries generate explosive gases. Therefore, one should keep sparks, flame, and smoking materials away from batteries. SLI stands for starting, lighting, and ignition. These batteries are used for the ignition in combustion engines and supply a large amount of energy for a very limited time period. In fact, they can power thousands of start sequences successfully. A 12 volt battery consists of six cells interconnected in series. The rated voltage of a lead acid cell is approximately two volts for each cell. In practical application, the voltage is about 2.1 to 2.2 volts for each cell. They are installed in a battery casing made of plastic, divided by separating walls and connected in series by cell connectors. Batteries should immediately be charged if the voltage on an open circuit reaches 12.50 volts. Anything below and there is a risk that the engine may not start. Basically, flooded lead acid batteries are cheap in price, they are reliable, but their application use case scenario is more limited than other forms of batteries. It is critical to not short the battery by allowing the terminals to touch each other. The next step is to take a multimeter and check the voltage of the battery. A multimeter is the best tool to accurately test battery voltage. However, inexpensive load testers using algorithms like the one shown in this video can also perform a voltage reading check. It is interesting to note that there is often a slight difference in the readings. The goal here is not scientific accuracy, but just getting close and getting in the ballpark. When connecting a multimeter or tester, I connected the positive probe to the positive on the battery. Then I connected the negative probe to the negative on the battery. When disconnecting, I followed the reverse procedure by removing the negative probe from the negative first and then the positive probe off of the positive on the battery. The voltage of the battery can reveal a number of clues from the reading. For example, if the reading is 10.5 volts, it could mean that one of these cells has had premature failure, likely due to excessive heat or vibration. In addition, a battery kept in a low charge state for prolonged periods could experience sulfate crystal formation, rendering the battery not usable. The alternator of a modern combustion engine provides charge voltage to the battery whenever the car is running. The reading I just took revealed 12.80 volts, or fully charged. However, the car headlights were accidentally left on for a few hours, and the reading was 12.04 volts, or fully discharged. CCA means cold cranking amps. A load tester is required to check a battery's cold cranking amps. This is something a multimeter is not able to test. Increased mechanical resistance in the combustion engine means a larger ampere draw. For example, when the weather is very cold and the engine oil has a higher viscosity, it is more difficult for the starter to turn the engine over. So the draw of amperes would be higher. This is exactly why batteries tend to fail during the cold portion of the year. To charge the battery, a compatible charger is required and it is important to follow all battery and vehicle manufacturer guidelines. Removing the battery from the engine is not necessarily required. However, some literature recommends removing the negative battery terminal. This voltage interruption will obviously wipe out vehicle settings. Refer to vehicle and charger and battery specific guidelines. I place the compatible automotive battery charger near, but not on top of the battery being charged. With the charger away from the battery, I clamp the red positive alligator clip onto the positive battery terminal. Next, I clamp the black negative alligator clip onto the negative battery terminal. Finally, I plug the battery's charger power cord into the grounded electrical outlet. It is not appropriate to charge a battery in an engine that is hot. In addition, it is not advisable to charge a battery when the ambient conditions are above 80 degrees Fahrenheit or roughly above 25 degrees Celsius. Modern battery chargers have a computer that manages the current flow and will tell you when they are complete. Manual chargers will not, and this can be dangerous. The disconnection procedure is a reverse of the connection procedure just discussed. First, remove the plug from the grounded electrical source. Second, remove the black alligator clip from the negative battery terminal. Third, remove the red alligator clip from the positive battery terminal. Finally, I retested the battery voltage and I ran a CCA test for the 725 CCA this battery is rated for. The battery passed all checks. Irregular driving patterns is perhaps the largest culprit for why battery problems happen. Second and third cars are often standard in households these days. 
Extra cars are infrequently and irregularly driven. Infrequent driving or driving short distances with multiple cold starts does not properly give the battery the continuous charge it needs. This is why dedicated charging may be necessary. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. In addition, if you found this video helpful, kindly like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.